In this episode, I'm going to share with you how to get the most out of your week and how to plan it and prioritize what's most important in five minutes or less using a simple method called the ABC method. It's as easy as ABC. Let's dive in. What's up, friends? Paul here, and I want to welcome you to The Beautiful Mess, where we talk about tools and tactics to improve your life. This week, I'm excited to be diving into some tactics that entrepreneurs and successful people uh, use to get the most out of their week. I'll also share with you how to audit your week so that you know where your time went and how to make the most out of your week. And so be sure to stick around for that. But before we dive in, I am super excited to tell you about a actionable tip, the ABC method that I introduced and our sponsor. We have a sponsor for this podcast, the first sponsor ever, and I am thrilled to announce that Finisher's Secrets is the sponsor, Finisher Secrets. And like if you've ever felt like you've gotten to the end of the week and not sure where that time went, Finisher Secrets can help you with that. And one of the methods that they share in their newsletter, so if you're interested in getting actionable tips every single week uh, that will help you make more, do more in less time and just make sure that you're working on the right things, then this newsletter is for you. So basically what it does is um, it shares like weekly like tactics and tips for you to implement right away. It's very action orientated. It's not like this is a theory, you know, it it takes those theories and makes them action oriented. So with that, I want to encourage you to go to finishersecrets.com forward slash Paul. That way you can sign up for the weekly actionable tips um, to achieve more with less. And then by using this link, my good buddy Javier, said that he's going to be giving away his one page planning system and this you can use the ABC method with this one pager and let me tell you it's it's pretty awesome he he has this like journal let me show you the journal and like it's got a lot of the elements from this journal so if you're just interested in testing out for free this one pager is awesome um basically you got Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday, Friday, and then you've got your week plan. And this is what we're going to talk about, the ABC method, where you can um, list out your important to do's and then you can prioritize them. That way, you know that you're working on the most important things. Uh, So super excited. And then he also gamifies it. So like at the end of the week, you're going to add up your points. So you have your must do task and your might do task and your must do Tasks are three points. Your might do tasks are one point. So at the end of the week, you get a score and it's super exciting. And basically the question that he asks is, if you had only two hours, what would you focus on? And this is your must do task. So if during the day, if you only had two hours, what? And that that question just like in itself, like all of a sudden it's like, wow, gain, you gain so much clarity on like what you should be practicing or like working on. Uh, and so I'm super excited that he's going to be giving that way. And you can fold it up into this like, handy dandy um, thing that you can put on the side of your desk and that way you can just see the one day or you can open it up and see the rest of the days Um, but super excited that he's offering that for you guys Um, full disclosure I've helped Javier with some of his content if you go on YouTube I I made a review of myself of his journal it is just a great tool uh, if you're looking to level up your productivity and want to uh, further your success in life and so that's my recommendation. So now, without further ado, let's dive into the ABC method and how to get the most out of your week and prioritize the most important things. First off, why does this method work? Well, let me just tell you that successful entrepreneurs like Barbara Cochran, Kenneth Chenault, and Richard Branson have endorsed, like basically have talked about this method and say that it's, you know, a good way to prioritize your, you know, your list of to do's. Um, And so let me break it down on what these ABC uh, steps mean. So A is your must do tasks. Um, These are going to be your like needle movers, the game changers. Like basically, if you keep doing these, um, you're going to reach your goals. And like these are the must do for you to get where you need to go. 
Um, they're usually those urgent and important tasks and neglecting them has consequences. So it's important that you get these done. These could be things like cold calls, ad testing, hiring a VA. Um, so you want to make sure that they're first on your list and you start doing these ones first before any of the other ones. Next up are your B tasks. These are the should do tasks. They're like, you know, important, but less urgent. So um, they contribute to your progress, but they lack severe consequences if left unfinished. Think of returning calls or replying to emails. They're important. It's important to get and like communicate with people. However, you know, if you've if you keep on, you know, just handling your email inbox and don't get to those like important things for you to succeed in your business, in your life, then, you know, you're just letting that inbox control what's what your life is doing. And so um, it's important and they deserve your intention, but make sure that you prioritize that, those A, um, A tasks first. And the next C task, these are the nice to do tasks, um, but they often gather dust on your to-do list because they're not actually that important um, because they aren't time bound or critical for your su success, but still worth accomplishing if you've got the time and energy to do it. Um, and so most C tasks eventually can turn into B tasks. Like let's say you have like or, uh, something that you have to renew. Let's say your driver's license. Maybe you have it on your to-do list, but it doesn't, it's not due for another three months. You might not take action right away, but then let's say it's coming up. Maybe it even bumps up to an A task. So uh, that can happen. That can happen. So um, here's how to put the ABC method into action is basically you're going to take your uh, the sheet that you have that um, by signing up at finishersecrets.com forward slash Paul. Um, and then you go to this. Where is it? Here it is the week, your week section, and then you're going to fill out. Let me see if I, yeah, week section, and you're going to fill out your um, must deliver tasks. So that's your, like basically the, the A of the A's. Like that's like, if you get nothing else done, make sure you get this A task done. And then you're going to list out like the additional tasks. Um, and then on the side, you're going to fill in these ABCs. So your must do's, your, yeah. Um, important but less urgent um the should do's and then the nice to do's your c's and so this gives you an easy way to like see your most important tasks in a clear and um prioritized way so list them out write abc next to each task and that way when you're looking at your week task and prioritizing and you know scheduling them in on let's say your day like your must do tasks and your might do tasks on a day um, that way you can put those in first and then you can time block. Javier's a huge fan of the time block method. Uh, I think he got inspired by, um, Benjamin Franklin actually, uh, in, in his journal. I think that's where he got his inspiration for this time block method. And he, with all the research that he's done in productivity, he's basically found that time blocking is probably the number one, uh, productivity hack that you can do is just time blocking your day. So you get this all, you know, Monday through Friday, you can block out your time and make sure you're prioritizing those most must do, uh, must deliver and a, like additional tasks. Make sure you schedule those A tasks first, followed by B and then C. You, you get the get this, uh, the picture here. Um, but yeah, basically this simple method, you know, it, it basically you can probably accomplish this in five minutes or less. Um, and all of a sudden you've got a much more focused and organized week. You don't feel like you're just haphazard going through. It's like, no, I've got a system. I've got a, you know, easy way to do this. And so do this every single week, maybe schedule a time on Fridays that you sit down and you write out this list and then you prioritize ABC and then just see the difference that it makes in your week, having a plan. And then like you might recognize that you unlock this insane productivity and effectiveness um, and helps you all of a sudden tackle those things that really matter. So that's the ABC method. 
I'm super excited to share it with you and I'm so thankful for Finisher Secrets for sponsoring this episode and the actionable tip of the week. Uh, they just give so much value and again, sign up for their newsletter so you get this one pager and also those actionable tips every single week. Highly recommend it. So finishersecrets.com forward slash Paul. And then um, I thought I'd continue on this theme of setting yourself up for success. Um, so how would I recommend you going about it? Like maybe sometimes you feel like you get to the Monday and then you just realize that you forgot to plan ahead. And this is actually most people that forget to plan ahead. And so first of all, don't beat yourself up about it. It's quite common. Most people don't plan ahead and they're putting out fires every single day, but there's a better way. Um, so perhaps before filling out this ABC method, do a brain dump. So basically list out everything that you need to do. And then this is where you can bring in those most important tasks into your week. Um, you know, maybe list out the 10, 10 or so items that are most important into this week. And that way you've already prioritized that way. And then use the ABC method to clear, make sure it's cleared up and then time block, um, then keep it simple. Um, so one thing that I find really interesting, so I'm reading this book called Buy Back Your Time by Dan Martell. Martell is a entrepreneur and also a friend of Alex Hermosi, Hermosi, who I'm sure many of you are maybe part of the Mosey Nation and familiar with Alex Hermosi. I'm super excited for his $100 million leads book. Um, so that that's coming up. Super excited about that. But like one of the things that fascinated me, I, I forget if it was in his book or I was just listening to a podcast interview with Dan, but he basically said that he uses like a Google doc, super simple to list out like his tasks. And then when he like plans out his week, he'll actually take those tasks and then put them in a time slot. Like he'll block it out that time on his calendar. Um, I, I don't know if he does it himself or his assistant, because I know he's a big fan of like having an executive assistant but he'll like block out the time and then in the description. So he's not like unsure what he needs to do. He'll actually list out what he's going to be working on during that time block. So the same thing you can do with this sheet of paper is like put in the details of like what you're going to be working on during each hour. Um, I believe it was Brendan Burchard, Brandon, Brandon, Brendan, I forget exactly, but hey, he's a productivity expert, but he talks about the importance of reducing buffer time. And what buffer time is, is it it's a time between tasks. So you've got task A and you've got task B. But oftentimes, after you complete task A, it takes you a little while to get into task B. And so you want to practice getting out of one task and getting into a, another task as quickly as possible because this will um, increase your productivity and decrease that lag time that like, you know, you get up, do something else, you might go on your phone and then... You, you know what it's like. Um, anyways, yeah, so he's got this simple like method, Google Docs, and then his Google Calendar for keeping track of things. So sometimes simpler is better. And that's one of the things that I'm realizing, you know, um, I love all these productivity tools, ClickUp, um, Sansama, like Notion, like these are awesome, awesome tools. But sometimes they just get in the way and like a tool like the finisher secrets like journal, which is like it's tactile. You can just pick it up, write in it. Um, it's it's sometimes simpler. Like you don't have to worry about, you know, getting distracted by other things on your computer um, and going down a rabbit hole. You know, it's sometimes pen and paper, even if you know just a regular piece of paper and a pen um, can can do wonders. So my recommendation: don't overcomplicate. Keep it simple. Kiss it. Uh, I, I, I like the version that Javier told me, keep it stupidly simple. Yeah. Keep it stupidly simple. Kiss it. Okay. So here's another variation of the ABC method. And this one, I believe I either got from Brian Tracy and or, uh, Dave Ramsey. So both people that are highly successful and Brian Tracy is like the productivity guru like he's he's got all these um things I, I remember listening to some of his you know talks and uh youtube videos but basically it expands this if, i think it's for like more daily planning 
but basically it's a A B C D E F. Just kidding. There's no F. Um, so A is your like basically the top priority, very very similar to the A B C method. B is like your second tier things. C is like not essential but nice to do. D is delegate. So they add one more to delegate, and then E is eliminate, and F is forget about it. Just kidding. That's again. There's no F. There's no F. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, that's that's like one way. And then what they recommend is then putting numbers next to them. So you gain even more clarity of what to work on first. So you got A1, A2, A3, and then your B tasks, you label them one, two, three, four. Same thing with your C tasks. And then all of a sudden you've got like a order that you should be working things and like on. It's kind of like your playlist for the week, like you know, or, or for the day, like you know. This is what I'm going to do first. This is what I'm going to do second. And that way, the most important things are done first and then so forth and so on. And you have no question about what you should be working on next. Um, so along the lines is that like if you find that you're highly successful using a certain tactic or maybe you're not, like maybe something doesn't work, it's important to review your day and re- like and review your plan for the next day. This will basically help you identify your priorities. Again, looking back on your week, ABC, you know, what you listed out and then put those in action by, you know, planning it out. You can plan your whole week out if you want, time block it all. Or maybe you just go day by day. If you can time block out the week, that's great. That way you're not guessing. You just have to review it maybe every single day, make small adjustments. And then finally, this is something I'm learning about uh, I've, I've heard about it before from people like Chris Do, Chris Do, Chris Do. I keep on butchering his name, but Chris, uh, he's like a super creative individual, but basically he recommends doing like a time audit so that you know where your time's going and that way you can prioritize those most important tasks. Um, and then most recently for me, as I'm reading in the Buy Back Your Time book, is the importance of doing a time audit. So one of the things that like many highly successful coaches and entrepreneurs do to find a lot of value is doing a time audit because all of a sudden they realize, you know, where their time is going. And perhaps, you know, when they said they didn't have time for something, they're just prioritizing things that aren't as important. And so this definitely gives you clarity. And so I'm going to break down really quickly how you can perform a time audit, um, and get the most out of this exercise. So ideally you'll do it for two weeks because then you have like, you can account for maybe you're traveling or things like that. So maybe if there's something unusual, you can account for that. Um, so number one, find a way to track your time. Keep it simple. Keep it as simple as possible. This could be paper. This could be a Google sheet. Um, it could be a digital tool like toggle. That's the one I'm using. Um, T-O-G-G-L, toggle. Um, And then a digital calendar could be another option like Google Calendar. Um, And basically you want to track more or less in 15 or 30 minute increments. And um, don't don't get caught in the weeds of like (laughs) tracking how much time it took you to brush your teeth. You know, don't like if it's less than like 15 minutes, it's probably not worth you tracking. Uh, you basically want to get more of a big picture, but also like individual tasks, like how long certain things take and might open your eyes to see, you know, what it actually does, you know, takes. Um, and then once you complete this exercise, this is something that Dan recommends in his book is you take a red and green highlighter and you're going to highlight in green, the tasks that brought you energy that energized you. For example, maybe you made coffee in the morning and that brings you a lot of energy. Or maybe you coached a client and that's super exciting to you. You can mark that in green. Whereas the red ones, they take energy. They drain you of energy. Think of like tasks like maybe you hate budget meetings or taking care of um, fixing a leaking toilet, you know, stuff like that. Who knows? Um, But like basically those things that really just drain you, you're just like, I'm done with this. Those are your red ones. And then finally, you're going to provide a idea of the value of those tasks. That way, 
when you're looking at prioritizing your tasks or looking for things to delegate and offload to other people, you know, you want to put a dollar sign next to it. So, you know, maybe making coffee is a low value task. So you put a single dollar sign and uh, Dan recommends doing one dollar sign to four dollar signs, similar to like Google or was it Facebook where they put like um, how expensive something is like a restaurant. They'll put like dollar signs to indicate that. So you can put your high value items as four dollar signs and then the low value items as one and then anywhere in between as you see fit. For example, um, you know, one of the ways that this can be very impactful is doing a review of what you find. So once you've color coded green, red, and then put the dollar sign, now you have a roadmap to make a difference and to see what things should be removed. First of all, like see if you can eliminate it altogether, what things should be delegated and prioritized. For example, if I want to make a YouTube video, and I realize that there's no time spent working on a YouTube video, then there's probably a realignment that needs to happen. And so that's so super important to keep in mind um, because, you know, as a result of seeing the time on it, it'll, you'll gain so much clarity and you you won't be surprised by why things aren't happening. You'll be like, You have that clarity of like, this is why it's not happening. It's because I spent only two hours when I needed to spend 10 hours on this project. So, um, yeah. So, those are some helpful tips for planning out your week. If uh, I'd love to hear from you, what are your favorite tools and tactics for prioritizing and planning your tasks and projects right now? It doesn't have to be your absolute favorite, just what you're using right now. Do you use a physical planner, digital planner? And then, um, yeah, drop a comment, which is your favorite. Um, Or if you've gotten this far and just want to make a comment, share my week equals and then insert an emoji so I know you've made it this far. And uh, also, I'll I'll know how your week is going. Uh, I always always love hearing from you guys. Um, And don't don't forget to sign up for that free one-page planning system from Javier. Again, it gives you weekly actionable tips on to get more done with less. It's an awesome newsletter. Um, So check that out. And don't forget to rate, review, subscribe to this podcast. Wherever you listen to podcasts, we're on YouTube if you want to see my beautiful face. Uh, So be sure to check that out. Um, Also, I think Spotify has video now, so you can see it on there as well. Um, But until next time, my friends, stay messy. Stay messy.